We will demonstrate static analysis using the simple rectangular plane frame that you see on the screen. It has pin supports at the base, and the top is loaded with a small horizontal point load and a downward uniformly distributed load. Let's begin by choosing a linear static analysis. Generally, the load cases list field should be left blank so that all load cases are analyzed. However, you can list specific load cases if you don't want to analyze them all. For large models that take a long time to analyze, you can change the optimization settings to speed things up. The Analysis Optimization video shows this in more detail. Small models of a few hundred members or less generally analyze in just a few seconds and therefore don't require optimization. Most of the other fields can be left at their default values. At the end of the analysis, you can see a typical deflected shape that shows a sway of 22.9 to the right. Now let's double the vertical load to see how it affects the sway. Surprisingly, perhaps, we get the same result. This demonstrates the shortcomings of a linear analysis due to the fact that it doesn't consider second-order effects, such as P delta. Let's now revert back to the original load. And then reanalyze but this time non-linearly, ensuring that both P-delta effects are turned on. Now we are getting larger sway deflections of 37.2. If we double the vertical load once again, and then reanalyze again non-linearly the sway deflections increase further to 99.3 note that while we have doubled the vertical load the deflections have more than doubled this demonstrates the non-linear nature of sway frames so you can see that non-linear analysis is more accurate than linear and should always be used especially when sway is involved. A linear analysis is generally much quicker than nonlinear because no iterating is involved. However, it should only be used as a quick first analysis or if the model is fully braced. We will now increase the vertical load dramatically to see how much the frame can withstand. Analyzing non-linearly again. You can see that we get a deflection that appears to move in the wrong direction. The reason for this is because the frame's buckling capacity has been exceeded. However, apart from the sway direction, the deflected shape looks quite reasonable, and you could be excused for thinking that the results are okay. Of course the results are totally incorrect and could result in an unsafe design if they were used. For this reason, Space Gas comes with a frame buckling check that should always be turned on during a static analysis. If we repeat the static analysis with the frame buckling check on, it detects the buckling problem and displays an error message. This message should never be ignored, and when it appears, the results should never be used. Now let's reduce the vertical load somewhat to try to stay within the frame's buckling capacity.
analyzing non-linearly again and ensuring that the frame buckling check is turned on. The error is now gone and the analysis appears to have been successful. However, if we show the deflected shape, you can see that the deflections are extreme and we still appear to have a problem. The reason is that although the frame hasn't buckled, it is quite close to buckling. As a general rule, as the loads approach the frame's buckling capacity, the deflections approach infinity. If the loads are further increased beyond the buckling capacity, then the deflections often reverse in direction. The last analysis demonstrates that while the frame buckling check can detect if buckling occurs, it can't tell you how close the frame is to buckling. For this reason, a full buckling analysis is often required, and this is demonstrated in the next video.